What's up everyone, Spiker here. We have another Facebook Live with Ryan and myself. This time we're talking about the controllables. And there's seven of them. By the way, I think I'm like the only person that I know that writes a seven like this. Live with Spiker Helms and Ryan Rowe Miller, um, two national directors for the Rawlings Tigers. And today we have an well, tonight we have an awesome. I guess we can call it a show. I don't, I don't know. We're kind of we're three. I, we're we're I in a street. Like I like the Spiker and Ryan show. Spiker and Ryan show. Or the Ryan and Spiker show. We'll let you guys make that vote. We're on a winning streak here. We got three in a row. Um, speaking of winning streaks, um, MLB. Playoffs are absolutely on fire today, and the Milwaukee Brewers just trounced the Chicago Cubs. How are the Cardinals doing? Today's episode, we have, an, we, have an, <laughs> we have an outline of the show. Here it is. Um, we're going to do seven controllables, and then we're going to jump into the giveaway. We're going to give away the Homer towel, and we have the entries here. There is 60 total, and we're going to be giving away this bad boy. Um, and then after that, we're going we're gonna to talk about college night. We have a huge announcement for um, our club. We have college night coming up. And then after that, we have Ripken. Um, Ripken is sponsored with us, so uh, partner with us. And they're, they're doing some amazing stuff. And they have a deadline. This is for anyone. They have an early bird deadline um, for October 4th, which is this week. So if you want to enter into any of, your, any of their events, um, they have the early bird special right now going on. So if you want to access that. Also, Tiger teams, you get 10% off of the total bill. So that's a huge plus. So if you're not in the club, there's an early bird special. If you are in the club, there's an early bird special, and you get 10% off. So um, with that said, I, I want to talk about the seven controllables. And each week when we do this, um, me and Ryan and I talk about – was it me and Ryan? I think it's Ryan and I, in proper English. Ryan and I. It was a solid effort. Um, we have multiple conversations uh, through text, phone, um, just a phone call. And um, when we're around the facility and we're like, hey, what do we want to talk about this week on Facebook Live? And when it comes down to it, we can talk about um, the, the tools, like, your actual fielding, your hitting, mechanics, we could, we could easily talk about that. But the internet right now is completely drowned out with that. So when you turn on MLB Tonight, they're talking about mechanics. Um, when you turn on Instagram or your Facebook feed, they're going to be talking about the mechanical side. So we don't – It for us, it, it kind of bores us because it's the same thing over and over again. Yes, you have different tendencies with launch angle and flat and down to the ball and then also the tr fielding triangle. You will have – um, different thoughts on that. But for us, what do we think is going to deliver the best value and is just going to change your career? And when we, we dig down deep to it, it's usually the mindset. One, one way I usually think about it, and I was telling my players this this weekend, is that, uh, you know, your talent and your skill level, that's just the icing on the cake. All right. If we were to remove that entire layer of icing, what's left is just the cake and everybody's the same. So Point being is what's going to differentiate yourself from the next guy, from the next girl, when your talent's gone. And it all has to do with what's going on between the ears and, and in your head, and that's where the control will start. Uh, your, your, your talent is going to level out as you start getting older and competition starts getting harder uh, or, and better. But it's the things that you can control as a player that's really going to make you stand out amongst the rest. And there's seven of them, Spiker. Yeah. And – um, guys, when you have questions, uh, comment in the comments below or to the side. I think it's to the side. Yeah. Comment. Um, if you like what you're hearing, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you want to ask a question, just comment in there. And then, um, obviously, we do put entries into the next giveaway. So the, the comments and questions that go on in this Facebook Live will not be for the towel, but for the next giveaway that we do have. We're, still, we're working on that one. Yeah. I'm thinking about uh, giving away Homer, our mascot's outfit, but I don't know. That's a bold move. 
Right now we got Vanessa, Zach Bass, Scott Hodges, Jeremy Smith, Kevin Keebler. Thank you guys. I, for, hopefully I said that last one right. Let us know where you guys are from. Yeah, thank you guys for coming in. Again, I'm Spiker Helms. This is Ryan Romiller. We're both national directors for the Rawlings Tigers right now. Ryan is in his fall baseball season, so um, a lot of conversations on mindset, a lot of conversations lot of on mechanics. So um, let's jump into the seven controllables. The first one is focus. And when um, I was – when I was a little guy, we had a, we had a coach that always talk about focus. And it was kind of one of those, those things that kind of stick with you when you're little and you start having this, um, idea of, um, like, what is this guy talking about? Like, there's a lot of things that go on in your head, but as I started growing into my career, that word stuck with me. Um, when I was, when I was, when I was very little to yeah. when I was in professional baseball and, it's hard. It's it's not hard to do that in the short term, um, when it when it's a hyped game and it's your rival. You got your buds on the other side, and you're trying to compete at the highest level, and you got fans rooting for you. It's a championship game. It's really really easy to focus in those situations. But the separating factor when you get from one player to the next, and from good to great, is the person that's able to focus. 162 games and talking about MLB players, 162 games. Um, I reached my peak when it came to that. I, I was a guy that was very focused in 365 days out of the year, I, getting in the cage, working out and doing what I needed to do. But when it came to game time on that 147th day or the um, 132nd day, um, there were times where I just got tired. I was just like, you know what, why am I doing this? And that's the difference between, uh, I always mention this, Luke Voigt and me. Luke Voigt was totally focused in on every single game, every single play, and he had the process down pat. The next one is that, effort. I want Ryan to talk about effort. Actually, he's got a good answer for it. Actually, that, that, that's going to segue right into effort because, believe it or not, it's, it's a very hard thing to understand, and, and you learn as you get older, but it actually takes effort to focus. And – and so when we're losing that focus, then we got to ask ourselves, when we're not focused, what is it a lack of? Probably effort. Um, we're, not giving, we're not allowing ourselves to have our attention in the right spot. And that effort is what's leading to mental mistakes, mental errors, if you must. Uh, I like to use um, – I like to differentiate the two types of errors. There's hustle errors and there's mental errors. Mental errors are just a lack of focus, a lack of awareness, a lack of understanding the situation, just going through the motions. Therefore, it's a lack of effort. Um, your hustle errors are the, the errors you make as a player when you're really trying to make that play. When you're a shortstop, you're hustling in on a slow roller and the ball boots off your glove or you're a center fielder and you're in the outfield running a ball down and, and you extend your arm fully extended and, and the ball goes in and out of your glove. It's still an error, unfortunately, but it's a hustle error because your effort, your effort allows you to even have a chance to making that play. So when we talk about focus and effort, uh, it takes a lot of effort to focus, and when, when you when you put in that that effort to focus, it allows you to make those uh, those plays. And, and if you do end up making a hustle error, so be it. You can live with that. I can sleep with that. It's it's the errors that you make that are mental because your your lack of awareness. You're out there picking dandelions, talking. I don't know what on the field. Those are the kind of mistakes we need to make, and, and that's going to segue into hustle too. Yeah. And before we get into hustle, I want a huge shout out to Jeremy Smith from Mobile, Alabama. What's love, up, Jeremy? Love you, buddy. Um, and also Jason Morad from I think I said it right, guys. I'm s i am do not want to get your name wrong. So um, if we get your name wrong, correct us. Send us a Facebook message and correct us because we do want to give you guys a shout out. He's from Cleveland, Ohio, and then our softball national director is in training. And um, he mentioned a, a quick comment. What's up, guys? Um, and just wanted to say hi. So a hustle, hustle is a dichotomy. And when I, when I talk about dichotomy, you got two different things, right? So um, a hustle play, like Ryan said, is effort and going all out and being able to hustle down that line, diving after those plays. But there can be a point where you over hustle. And that's when you start seeing players die for balls that they shouldn't die for. It's having this understanding of how the play is, um, get, how the game is being played out in front of you. And what you want to do is that, you, you have to go with the ebbs and flows of the game. You want to hustle at the right times. Now, when we talk about in between innings, if you're walking and you're jogging and you're not doing your job to get off that field, we have a problem. 
you have to get off that field as fast as you possibly can because it sets the tone for everybody else. But when we're talking about hustle type plays where there's a ball hitting the gap and you're the left fielder and you dive and you're not even close to it, that is a bad hustle play. That is not good. That's not what we want. A, ra a, a hustle play in that definition is if you, if that ball is in the gap, you chase that sucker down and you beat the center fielder. That's the difference between a good hustle play and a bad hustle play. Another aspect of this is that when players see major leaguers and they're jogging down the line and you, a, a coach will say, they, they're, don't be a major leaguer, don't jog down the line. There's a reason why major leaguers jog down the line and they're taught this way because they're playing 162 games. Back when they played college and back when they played youth baseball, they were hustling down that line because one, they wanted to be noticed. And two, they're, they're, they're trying to set the tone for, for their play for the rest for the game and for the rest of the season. They wanted to send a message to their, their players. But in professional baseball, you're playing 162 games. Yadier Molina is not going to be busting down the line um, 90 feet for um, a play uh, for a game in 100, 142 game, like the 142nd game. In the playoffs, he will, but not in the 142nd game because he has to make sure that he's ready to play in the playoffs. So understand your hustle plays. And this is a thing for the coach. You have to set the tone for that. And that means starting when you're running on and off the field. Real quick, guys, this is the list we're going down. Uh, we've done focus, effort, hustle, now attitude. Then we've got emotions, body language, and communication. And attitude, attitude's a big one. You cannot have the focus, the effort, and the hustle with a bad attitude. Um, we had a question come in from um, Mike Side, who's been joining us the past two weeks. And his question deals with players that throw their things and, and there's no consequences for it. So a player that gets out, he comes back to the dugout, throws his stuff, and, and nothing happens. What do you do as a coach? Uh, it, it's a tough one. It kind of just depends on the player because, you know, some players, some players it's, it's, it's out of line for them. You know, some players, are, they're, they're – their quality and, and character, it's just they've been struggling and they're out of line and it's a one-time thing. You just, you know, as long as it doesn't make a scene for me, you let it go. But now if it's a player that makes it continuous, you give them a warning the next time and you, and you kind of nip it in the butt if you must. Um, and that's it. I mean, one warning and you're done. For me, it's one warning and you're done. I don't, I don't like to play games because I'm trying to um, – I like to spend my time teaching and coaching – players I don't like to spend my time babysitting and I know no other coach likes to do that either and some coaches have that three strike policy yeah. you have the one strike policy um I'm I'm a guy that it, it's the same thing as Ryan I go I go by feel I go how the situation goes so if it's if it's an issue and that player throws a helmet we're having we're having a serious talk after the game and also you're not playing and I'm, I'm, I have done this before. I have lost games because a player has thrown his helmet, and I have taken him out of the lineup, and I was literally done with pitching. I had no pitching left in the tournament. I had no positional players left in the tournament. I had a lot of injuries, and I took the player out, and we ended up losing the game. So um, attitude is a huge, it's, huge deal. It, it, I mean, it's it's 100%. And uh, – Honestly, I always tell my hitters, you got to learn to be good with two strikes. So why give them three chances? So it's if you're going to be a good two strike hitter, then you got to be aware 100 percent when you're out there and and understand that every little thing that, that you let go of, every little thing that you don't put attention on uh, when it comes down to the controllables, uh, it's what dictates a win versus a loss. It's what dictates how the team does as a whole and how a team doesn't do. So uh, it's it's attitude and that's going to lead into emotions. Emotions are um, one of those things that's being talked about in Major League Baseball right now. And Major League Baseball is dealing with an issue with um, keeping the attention span of its fans. And um, they, they, they point to the celebrations where um, baseball is notoriously known as you don't showboat, you don't um, – you don't you don't do bat flips. That's why in the last five years there's been a lot of issues yeah, with Jose, with, those bat flips? with the Jose Batista. You're not gonna like my answer on this, Jose Batista. Um, and guys, I'm I'm 
I'm typically old school, but in this situation for Major League Baseball, for that for it to be um, more successful, they need to have those big moments, those celebration moments. Because if you look at um, South Korea and you look at the Dominican Republic, um, those those guys and those leagues, they celebrate the big big. Uh, moments and it's a it's a celebration of like you did it you did an unbelievable job you just hit that ball over the fence and um, we're celebrating another one was Lindor in Puerto Rico when he hit a home run in front of his um, in front of his family in front of his friends um, and his countrymen he he went crazy and it was in the fifth inning so baseball is subtly changing but here's where I draw the line is that youth baseball there's there's no need for that there's absolutely no need because when, when you talk about the grassroots and you're talking about principles and you're talking about um, attitude, you, that there's, there's no business for that right now because, one, you're dealing with a lot of young, younger players who don't know how to deal with their emotions. And so when you promote that and you say, you need a bat flip, that's not good. It's definitely not good because um, the, the other players are gonna, not going to take that the right way. And right now in American baseball, it's, it, that's just not it. That's, that's more of street play. That's more of like backyard play. Um, in, in a traditional game, I don't think that's really where it needs to be. Now, when you get to college baseball and you get to professional baseball, I do think you need to do that because you're dealing with a fan base and you're dealing with people that are paying money to see you play. And so you have to put on a show for them. That's, that's the big thing with professional baseball. You are the show. You are the person that's getting paid to put on um, an act for somebody else and show that, hey, I can hit a 95-mile-an-hour fastball and I can hit over the fence. Oh, I'm going to bat flip too. So there, there is that because you have a fan base. In youth baseball, you don't have that. You're actually paying to be in a tournament. So um, you need to handle your stuff in a certain way where it needs to be, you have to develop your principles. Once you get your principles and once you get that, then you can, then once you get into a position where you're getting paid to play scholarships or um, being actual, getting a paycheck, you need to put on a show. You need to, you need to be excited about what you're doing. You also don't want to be the kid that hits 20 home runs and youth baseball in a single season and does a bat flip every time. Yeah. And all of a sudden you get to high school, college, and you can't even hit a 90 mile an hour fastball to save your life. So, I mean, it's – you don't want to be the best of youth baseball. You want to be the best of when it's time to be the best. Do you yeah. want to impress a scout or do you want to impress a fan base at youth baseball? Exactly. I'd rather take the scout, and the scout doesn't want to see that. One, one last thing I want to touch on with uh, emotions is this is an emotionless game. Baseball is an emotionless game. I like to call it the emotional roller coaster. Uh, if you're an individual, if you're a player or you're a team that, that got, likes to get really excited when things are going good and then all of a sudden things go bad and you get really low, it's going to be a tough season for you. This 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 game is built on consistency, um, and that's good and bad. Uh, you want to be consistently good in the in, or good in the quality aspects, and then obviously you're going to have those consistent failures. And it's just about staying level headed, and understanding that those failures are going to happen. You got, just got to have to accept them, you know. And, and you can't get down on yourself. And at the same time, I you know there's got to be a certain level where you know. Back to the home run thing, this is the one thing that sticks out for me the most is your teammate hits a home run. Do we really need to be running to the plate, jumping up and down? That's like, true. Is, that's a moment. That is a prime example, a great, a great moment example of when sometimes teams and players get way too excited and don't understand the longevity of the game, that anything could happen. Mm-hmm. And, and when you let your emotions take control of you, let your emotions override the situation in, in the current moment, you tend to forget. Well, and, and your season's going to go up and down. So if you do that and you're, you're riding high on emotions and you celebrate everything, you're, you're, you're riding on that high. But then what happens when that high goes away and you just go completely down and you're in, you're in the dumps? It is really hard to get out of that low, that low end. That's where you uh, – lack of a better term or lack of a better saying for Pro Bowl, that's where you get paid is what are you doing when you're at the lowest, lowest point? And that's what I'm talking about with the principles is that, yes, celebrate, have fun, have fun with your boys, but don't do the bat flips. Don't be over overjoyed because what's going to happen is you haven't been taught yet the how to deal with the lows. Once you deal with the lows, then you can go, go off on a tangent and being able to celebrate because then you're able to get back to the level that you need to be at. You want to stay here the whole season, the whole game. Do not let your, if I have to say one important thing tonight, it's this right here. 
Do not let your emotions dictate and control the outcome of your game. They will 100% guarantee override your skills, override any talent that you have if you let them take control of you. So you have to be able to eliminate those from the game and understand things are going to happen, good and bad, and just got to roll with it. We have we have a lot of great comments on here, guys. Um, I, we will we will respond once the live session is done. We always do it every night. Um, so the long comments we're going to be commenting back after the session. If we see a question that we love, we're gonna we're gonna point it out. And we're gonna talk about it. Um, Jeremy Smith, you're absolutely crushing it on the comments. Love it. Um, and Fernando, thank you, thank you. Much props. Um, and then obviously Mike Sy, our guy's back. He loves it. Um, right. And then and then uh, Kevin Glock. Um, with the heart, um, former former uh, Tiger parent and alum, his his uh, son is at Benedictine and doing really really well. Um, he actually is a positional player and was getting some innings. Um, the next the next thing that we're talking about is body language, and it's funny how all of these are kind of stockpiling on itself. And um, right now with body language, it go it goes back to um, the bat flips and everything like that. But more importantly, um, it's I want to see what happens when you fail that's when I'm going to really know what your character is made of. That's when I know that, hey, this guy is a real guy or he's a pretender. Um, is, he, is he a contender or a pretender? And when I see a guy that um, is frustrated and he deals, it, deals with it in a way that you can't tell, that the fans can't tell that he's frustrated, the coaches can because we, we see him every day. But if no one else can tell except the coaches and his, and his, and his players or his teammates, you're in a pretty good. You're in a pretty good standard. Like um, I, I remember one time with with bases loaded, I was hit a ground ball and it was the seventh inning. I ended up losing the game and threw it over our catcher's head. Probably one of the most embarrassing moments I've ever experienced. How high was that? Uh, it was. It was pretty high. It, it, it was. It was probably where the backstop. It was. It was bad. And I remember walking off the field and just thinking, like, I cannot believe that just happened. But what happened was our coach came came across the field. And he said, that's not okay. You're going to make that play next time. But the best part about that was I had no idea that you just lost the game. That's the aspect that you want. And I have, I've played with players that um, have done it better than I did. And I've had players that have done it worse than I did. But you want to you want to make sure that you're staying here always. And, you know, this is a, this is a good one for me. Because I had to learn the hard way a little bit uh, coming up, not just baseball, but sports in general. Uh, you know, I just, I was the type of person that I would get I would, – something would happen, I would get upset. I wouldn't get emotion. Like, I wouldn't cry. I'm not, I was never that type of player. And if you're that type of player, we need to knock that out now. But I was the type of player that I'd go back to the dugout. Uh, I might, if I was had a wood bat, I've I'd broken a wood bat before on the ground. I've actually broken my hand in basketball, but we don't need to talk about that. But point being is I had to learn the hard way how to control my body language. And the, and the hardest thing ever, the, the hardest thing I've ever had to learn was that the time you're the most upset, the time you, you're just feeling this anger, you're struggling, you're in the hole and you can't get out and nothing's going right, those are the times that you want to express that the most, but those are also the times you just need to stop, pause, hesitate, think to yourself, take a breather, remind yourself, all right, just stay in control, stay in control. Because the second you lose control, you obviously you, you get that negative body language, and then all of a sudden the, the, the house of cards falls after that. The emotions, the attitude, the hustle, the effort, and the focus. So it's 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 one thing you can one thing wrong, you can pull the rug out on all of them. So and, and another thing with body language too is that you don't know who's watching. There doesn't have to be anybody in the stands at the game you're playing. There could be a coach two hundred yards down. The field, you know, maybe at the softball field or somebody walking by that, that coaches. Point being is the baseball community is a very tight-knit community. And if, if you're in the baseball community, you, you really understand how players react. You understand how the game is played. And, and you can tell a lot just by how a player carries himself after he strikes out, after he makes an error, after something happens. Because, again, failure is going to happen. 70% of the time, minimum. So how are you going to react in those situations? And I can dictate how a player's career is going to turn turn out to be based on how he reacts in those situations like Spiker talked about. Before um, we head into the last one, we have a question from Chris Larnair. 
please guys correct me in the Facebook message if I get it wrong. Um, would like to know how you address those kids who allow emotions to take control, especially during the lows. Um, so I have, I have two things here. Um, as a coach, if it's, it, it depends on the situation. If he throws his helmet, he's gone. Um, if he throws his bat, he's gone. Um, meaning he's out of the game and we're not, he, he has a one game suspension, but if it's a scenario where he is getting frustrated and he, you can tell that he's showing his emotions, um, and it's not over dramatic. He's not yelling the curse word. He's not yelling curse words or throwing stuff. Um, I'd bring him along and I'd, and I'd, and I'd kind of talk him through it. Um, one of my teammates, I always mention him, Luke Voigt, um, cause we trained together. He probably doesn't remember this story. But um, we're at Missouri State. It was an inter-squad World Series, and um, he was notorious, and he'll tell you this. He's notorious for breaking helmets and um, breaking bats when he and in, when he was sophomore year, and I was a junior. And I I'm one of those guys that I, I just can't stand that stuff, and I like to joke around with it. I don't I don't like to address it head on because he's mad, and if I go in really hard and heavy, he's going to get mad at me, and there's going to be a yelling match. Um, and that's what you see in a lot of major league dugouts when that happens when they get frustrated. So what I did was he uh, he struck out, he throws, he comes down in the dugout, throws his helmet, yells a curse word, and everyone just sits there quiet, just looking forward. I get up, I run over, I grab the helmet, and I say, "It's okay. He's he's gone. He's he's gone. It's over. He's not going to come back anymore." And so what happened was is that everyone started laughing. Luke kind of just got it diffused him right away and coach our coach Gutton came over and was talking to him and says this has to fix itself you have to fix it because what's happening is, is if you start doing that and scouts see that that's going to hurt your draft stock and what he was going to get drafted no matter what but it's going to it's going to hurt your draft stock you're going to end up going way down below the list so when you're when you're dealing with a person that has high emotions the best way to diffuse that is one Try to try to be as calm, cool, collect as you can. Don't meet it straight head on. Um, if you're a coach and um, you see that the player is frustrated, you need to talk to them and you need to say, "Hey, you need to walk walk the walk. You need to be that guy that that rolls with confidence." Um, and if you're getting frustrated, um, take a deep breath, look to the outfield, then look back into the, to the um, plate, and let's get this thing back back where it needs to go. So there's multiple ways of diffusing it. Just don't meet it head on with emotions. I think uh, also. These are conversations. What we, the things we talk about, and and, and in regards to your question, uh, these, this is an ongoing conversation. The biggest thing is you can't wait for the moment to happen to talk about it. It's an ongoing conversation that needs to be had, especially at the younger level. Um, don't wait. My hat's all crooked. Don't wait for things to. Sorry, I don't like crooked hats, and uh, obviously I like wearing hats, but uh, uh, you cannot wait for situations to occur because now you're trying to teach a player who's in his emotions. And when he's in his emotions, he's totally shut off to you. So you have to, this is an ongoing conversation from now, from the time they step on the field at five, you, uh, you need to figure out a way to um, present that message to them in a, in a way that they understand all the way throughout their entire baseball career. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an ongoing conversation and you're playing for the long term. So it's, you're not looking for a quick fix. Now you're looking for a, 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 a quick fix over, you know, a short one year, one season, you know, how your goal is to make him a different player, make him not be able to want to throw his helmet by the end of the year. So again, just creating those conversations, having these conversations with your players and not waiting for the moment. Cause in the moment they're completely shut off to you. They're not going to listen. And then when you get to the high school level as a coach, you kind of have to mm -hmm. make them listen. So um, going back to the comments, we have Matt Meyer, um, Lindenwood, former Lindenwood, so Matt, um, a coach. He also has a company called Between the Lines. Um, make sure you check out that. Type in Between the Lines on Facebook, and it'll, it'll pull itself up. Has a really, really interesting company right now. But um, former Lindenwood head coach, and he says, "Keep up the great work, fellows." As a college coach, I can honestly say the composure of a player definitely has an effect on if that type of character fits our program. Also, we have Jared Silva talking about TCU's um, promotional video on quiet confidence. Jared, you have no idea going back to TCU. That's kind of what inspired us to, well, I don't know about Ryan, but inspired me to um, kind of have that narrative with 
you kind of offended. No, that. I'd say no, 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 no. But um, it kind of it kind of inspired me to deliver this point on on the Rawlings Tigers and kind of set the tone for us. And um, that's something that um, I always follow um, the TCU staff. Um, we're actually having for our college night. We're having one of the former staff members, um, uh, Tony Vitello, who's actually a St. Louis native. He's now the head coach of. Um, Tennessee. He's actually coming into our college night and speaking to our players um, about uh, the college experience and what it is. So um, we do have that coming up. So I'm, I'm absolutely pumped to see him on October 24th here in St. Louis. Um, but let's head into the last one, unless you have something to say about TCU. I kind of just rolled no, right through it. I think it's, no. I, I kind of, for me, I, I see it as a line mentality. A line mentality where you're just, you're confident in your ability. Mm -hmm. And you're, 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 you're able to tear anything apart and you're, you're willing to walk into the fight knowing you're, you're confident you're going to win, but you don't show that you're going to win. You just show relaxed. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know, you're kind of putting that nice guy look out there, but really in your mind you're going to tear that other team apart. Mm -hmm. Communication. Um, before we get into communication, guys, thank you for um, joining in with us at Facebook Live. If you want to comment, comment. Um, we are giving away this Later tonight, um, we're going to have more giveaways. So um, if you comment, we're going to add you in the next giveaway. All right, so the next last one, communication. And, guys, this is a printable document. We're going to try to get this out to you guys. Um, but communication, we had the, – I had the best infield coach, and Ryan did too. Coach Grado. Uh, yeah, junior college. And I'm hoping that at some point that Grado sees this, um, sees this Facebook Live. We should probably give it to him. We probably should. Um, and he inspired me to be um, way over communicative. And I was a guy that was um, an a, I'm an A type personality. I love I feed off of other people. I love being around people. Um, but for some reason, I struggled with the communication aspect of things, being loud on the field. And he made this great point. And he said, "If you are not excited about what you're doing, then you then you 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 shouldn't be on the field. And the best way of showing your excitement is communication and being passionate and trying to get your get your fellow teammates around you. And I took that, me personally, I took that as I need to be loud, I need to be vocal, I need to be a vocal leader. And me being at the second base and shortstop position. Um, and later in center field in my career, I had to be vocal. I had to talk to the guys to my left and the guys to my right. And I had to be able to call out every fly ball, um, not say two outs, play at first. That's just an obvious answer. But being able to say when the ball's in the air, saying up and, no, and for the catcher to be able to look up and be able to third baseman because sometimes they might not see that. Um, also, the last thing that I got from him was on being a leadoff role. I was a guy that was a leadoff hitter. I was very selfish in the beginning, and I wouldn't communicate to the guys what I saw. The first thing that I did was I wanted to see as many pitches as I could, and then and if I got a hit, I would come back in later, in later on in the inning or the second inning and talk about what I saw. And then after that, if I got out, I would actually that I would not be mad at myself. The, the first thing that I thought was, talk to every single hitter in the lineup and say, hey, this is what I saw. This is what he's doing. This is what the catcher's doing. That's what he's doing to me. Be aware of it. Um, his fastball is running. His curveball is is okay. And his changeup is pretty filthy. So be ready for that um, as a show pitch. So that that's what I got from communication. For me, communication, like Spider said, being able to talk, uh, not just during the play, but before the play, helping each, helping your team understand, like, the situation going on in the field, having a, a sense of awareness of what's going on. Uh, for example, I had a game this weekend, and we had the go-ahead runner on second base. We were playing defense, less than two outs. Ball hit to right field. Uh, where was my – cutoff should have been first base. Where was my first baseman? He was standing on first base. Keep in mind I'm coaching 15U baseball, so it's a learning curve, and, and this is just part of the process. Um, so when I say that because where was my pitcher? Well, my pitcher should have been backing up home, but no, he was standing on the mound playing cutoff. So, and that's not that's not technically his fault. No, it is it's his not. fault. It is his fault, but it's also the catcher's fault yeah. because the catcher should be communicating that on that play. And that's going to say that we're going to talk about that in a second here. And, and and what happened was his right fielder made an awesome throw in. It was a little bit offline, and what, and there was no cutoff guy. So, when there was no cutoff guy and the throws offline, that was down through the cut. What what would have been? Now it pulled the catcher away from the plate to go get the ball. Instead, 
Instead, if our first baseman was there where he should have been, that ball would have been cut back in line. We probably had to play at home to keep that run from scoring. So I use that as an example, as an example of how important communication is. It can win and lose ball games. It's 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 being able to talk during the play and, and, and jumping off of what Spiker just said. If you're a catcher, and I tell all I tell all my catchers this, I come through me. Understand if you're going to be a catcher and you're going to grow up a catcher. Learn how to be a leader. Have those leadership qualities. Learn them and, and force yourself to communicate because the catcher is what I would consider the quarterback on the field. It's the one that can see the field and see where everybody's lined up. It, it, they know what's going on. And, and be next to them is a shortstop. Shortstop, you got to be the leader on the infield. And then center fielder, you got to be the leader in the outfield. It's you, if you're going to choose any of those positions, understand the leadership roles that come with it. And if, if you're not capable of, of being a leader, you're, of not, being a leader. you're not playing that position. Yeah, you're not gonna at, play a high, at a high level, you're not playing that position. No, no. Without, without a doubt, you're not playing that. So it's communication. It's, there's a lot that goes on. It, it happens in the dugout. It happens during the play, before the play. It's just all it starts with is this, just talking, just talking. And sometimes it feels like it takes two weeks into a season to start talking to each other. It's like, guys, why wait till the end of the season? To talk to start that start that relationship now builds the culture man last thing on communication where i where i think it starts is off the field being able to text the coach say hey i'm not going to be here today hey i'm not going to make the game in two weeks just being able to communicate conflict just being able to communicate in in advance is where everything starts because i i I found there's a uh, there's a there's a correlation between players who who do not communicate with me off the field that also struggle to communicate on the field. And that tells me a lot there. And it's the players that communicate with me off the field, oh, they're, they're spot on on the field. So it's just all it is is talking. Keep it simple. Just talk, talk, and you'll learn. Angel, thanks for the thumbs up. Appreciate it. Um, now, guys, th- those are the seven controllables. Um, the sponsor for tonight is Ripken Baseball. They're a partner with us. They want to give an announcement that October 4th, this is this week. October 4th is their last of their early bird special. So if you would like to go to Ripken, they have an early bird special right now. So you can get it at a, at a, at a discounted rate or a more of an affordable rate. And, and you can access that. Now, our Tiger coaches, um, Tiger teams, you get 10% off as well. So you get the early bird and the 10% off. So that you get the double combo there. You know what they say about the early bird? Gets the one. Gets the first worm. Ah, got it. Okay, so um, if you would like to do that, October 4th, that's our last time. Go to Ripken, um, type it into the Google machine, and it will pull itself up. Now, Ryan, are you ready for your famous giveaways? Mm-hmm. Or is there something that you would like to talk about with mm-hmm. Ripken? Nope. Pigeon Forge is an awesome place. Been there. Been oh, there. yeah. We've but been there plenty of times. Before, last thing, before we do the giveaway of the towel, I just got to say one thing. This right here, sorry. <laughs> this right here is what separates play one player from another. This right here. I don't care how talented you are. I do not care about your skill level. If you have a bad attitude, terrible emotions, body language, if you're in the negative category in just a couple of these, that is going to override your skill and talent. No coach is going to want you. If you're a player with average skill and talent and you do possess these qualities, you have a chance to get better. You have a chance. Understand, skill and talent, that just takes work, physical work. This takes mental work. This is hard. I will take a player. That's super hard. I will take a player who can do this the right way because if you can do this the right way, you're telling me, you're showing me you have the potential to be a lot better than who you are currently now as a player versus a player who doesn't possess a whole lot of these but has but, but has that talent because that talent's going to fade talent talent level is going to level out as you get older and competition gets harder it's going to be how well you can deal with failure because those who can deal with it the best and these, will have the most success and these, and these make you that run is this, awesome and this makes you a good person it definitely yeah. does like this is this is just life in general Bigger than the, baseball. This stuff is all about life. If you're able to do these at a high level, you're going to be very successful in life. Period. All right. Oh, um, before we do the giveaway, college night. 
Tigers have a college night. This is a national event. Um, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna put the link up into the post after the live session. So if you would like more information on the college night, Tigers are all invited. Um, the, the people that are, are the individuals that are outside the club, I am going to be filming it. So we will post um, some of those clips that we find that were very good and we thought we think that would provide a lot of value to you. You're going to take those clips and put them on the line. Movie quote. All right, here we go. This is for the Tiger Tail. If you know that movie quote, put it in the comments. This is, I've seen some people leave comments. It's I, a Vince Vaughn movie. Very. Got one. Spiker, do the honors. You winner. You got to show them, though. You of the towel. Them. The tiger towel. Who is it? The females win again. Ah. Catherine Reed. That towel. See, it's oh. a towel, but you can use it as a blanket because it's actually quite comfy. Catherine Reed, you are the winner of the Homer towel. We will be contacting you via Facebook Messenger. And there it is. That is a top of the line this, tiger towel. This will be in your repertoire for next summer, or unless you want to go to Mexico or Florida or um, any of those deals in the winter. There it is. I kind of want to go to Mexico. Cool. Um, last thoughts, last closing statements. Ryan, go for it. You got 30 seconds. Oh, our GM, David Berkby, got married this weekend. Congratulations, Dave Berkby. He's not listening. He's usually listening, but. We'll put a picture out. Oh, okay. We'll put a picture uh, out. And then uh, yeah. my last closing statement is I that wasn't done, but that's cool. You had 30 seconds. This is like, said to, it's just like a, it's just I'm like, not going to be here next week, guys. It's just like a political debate. I'll be I'm you going got, back to Omaha you next 30 week. Seconds, Spiker's going to have a special guest. And then I'm going to move on to the next the next person. Spiker's going to have a special guest next week unless he can phone call me in. All right. So um, my 30 seconds is this: is that um, Ryan? We are going to miss you for the next Facebook Live. That thank was, you. We're done. That was See gonna you. Be, that was going to be my announcement. Also, Kansas City Tigers, thank you again so much for having us. It was an absolute blast. We cannot wait to um, see you guys when you guys get here into St. Louis um, this and ending fall. Um, and then last, we'll give one person uh, the last shout out. They'll get to close it out for us. We will go with. Before we do that, before we do no, that. No, 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 no. We have. A... Oh, you want to? Before we do that. Okay. Guys, if you missed our last two live sessions, this right here is a lineup chart for your fall ball or exhibition, or you can use it in the season if it fits. Uh, we'll have a link for this. Actually, the best way to contact us is on Twitter or send us a message here on Facebook. If you want this lineup chart, it's nine innings. You can play seven, however many innings. You can play up to nine on here. It's got roster, batting order, and whatnot. And then we got a quality at batch chart that you can hang up in your dugout as well as – sorry, struggling. As this, so you can chart your, your players. Sorry, I can't show you that side. Go. All right, uh, last closing statement. I'm going to give it to Jeremy Smith. He has been with us this whole Facebook Live session. Hey, baby, Jeremy. If you don't have personal relationships with teammates, they won't respect you on the field. That's absolutely correct. Um, and then I want to, Kate, Katie Morris. I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment back to you at the end of this. And then, yes, Peter and Katie got the movie quote right. The internship. When did you ask that question? You were not paying attention. You were, you were thinking about what you were gonna say next. But anyways. Thank you guys for joining us, and we will be back. I will be back next Monday. See ya. Take care of these.